Hello, Rod. How are you? Uh, as we say down here in the South, I am fine as frogs here. Thank you for asking. Sounds great. Sounds great. First, uh, first time you are hosting a space. Yeah, this is this is the the first time. Um, I, I quite often would post about uh, in my daytime job about trees, but you know, uh, people just want to read quickly about trees and move on, which is fine. And uh, but hey, that's okay. Um, I, I I took the leap of faith uh, about crypto. Uh, I've, I've been in, I've been a, I guess you would say a hobbyist for a couple of years, but I found uh, your protocol, your ecosystem, and it has absolutely fascinated me. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to start talking about this and um, away we go. So listen, guys, I'm going to be asking some very common questions. Um, Everybody uh, in this uh, community has absolutely amazed me. I respect all of you for your coding and your computer knowledge. But guess what? I'm an arborist. I'm not a coder. Uh, I don't uh, build ecosystems. Uh, I invest. And in, when I see a developer that's involved from a, a common man's perspective, um, I just I feel like that that is something that we really should rally around. Uh, Roz has created uh, something great that works uh, through through a community. Let me find my notes here. Roz, hang on. <clears throat> Roz, while I'm getting my notes out, you're very well known. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself for anybody that doesn't quite know you. Yeah, for, first of all, congrats. And I'm uh, really happy to see that uh, people... People like you enter into crypto. I think that uh, crypto in general is on uh, on the right path, uh, despite this uh, red sea and the fear that uh, that uh, has taken over the entire market. But uh, yeah, I I, I I truly believe that in our uh, ecosystem, the first principles of crypto ecosystem, things are uh, going slowly but uh, on the right direction and. Uh, I can just hope that uh, we're all going to make it, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, Roz, uh, a couple of years ago when I first started uh, participating in the crypto space, and everybody on here, you'll get a kick out of listening to this. I, um, I first started off in Coinbase, and I had this rule in my head. I said, you know, if I can't buy it on Coinbase... I'm not going to get involved with it. And then uh, went down the Celsius route, the Block 5 route. And uh, and then after that, uh, was introduced to MetaMask, by, actually introduced by CryptoMan69 on here to MetaMask. Um, and then it's just, you just, you go down the rabbit hole of all this. And I never would have thought that I would have been at this point in uh, just, being a hobbyist in crypto, but <clears throat> Roz, uh, Q Protocol stirred up quite a bit of euphoria over the past couple of weeks. I've been talking about it on uh, on the YouTube channel that I have, and and um, I think uh, if this space goes well, you and I will be doing a couple of um, interview sessions on there as well, just to get the word out. Uh, another. Small note today, we're trying to get uh, Q Protocol listed on an app called StockTwits. I know we all have our various opinions on that, but the more word we can get out. Um, I'll tell you what caught my eye, Roz, about Q is the fact that this is a community-based protocol that if participation is in place that everybody reaps tremendous benefits. How did you come up with that idea? Uh, yeah, so uh, one uh, small amendment, uh, because I was thinking, uh, uh, looking at the title, uh, chatting with the founder of Q, indeed, uh, I was one of the team members that put the, the code uh, into the, into the, on, the, on the blockchain, but actually we are all founders uh, so 
all of us that are very early adopters of QR are just like founders. And I was thinking that actually the early adopters of QR are essentially all founding members. If we compare Q, if you want, with a forest, because <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think this comparison you will understand very easily, uh, all these early adopters can come and claim one or more cues or one of more trees in the in the in the forest. Um, they don't have the freedom to decide to what to do with uh, the the asset. Uh, they can they can nurture the the trees, uh, wait patiently, and uh, contribute to the beauty and growth of the entire forest. And in the mean, meantime, uh, enjoying the rewarded fruit or eat, <laughs> or they can. Yes. Yeah, or you can yeah. chop them uh, down and sell the wood for short-term profit. Uh, it, it's not bad. Uh, profit is still profit. It, it all comes down what do we want to achieve with this ecosystem and how long do we want to stay together and how much we believe that this type of tokenomics, this type of constructions can actually make crypto great again. Because right now it's not. It's, it's, it's just, a, a, you know... Everyone is uh, actually putting dollars to get more dollars out of it. And while this is good, this is not what crypto was meant to be. Uh, yes. Um, th there's When I first started learning about your ecosystem, Rise, I was hyper-focused on the mining component of this. And listeners, you're, you're just going to have to forgive me. I'm a common person in this, and I don't think about all of it. But I'm going to tell you, Roz, uh, get me, joining the Telegram really and truly helped me because I, I, I learned how to look at this in several different components. Well, first off, if you, I, I learned that this protocol is a GUI-based payout system. And everybody knows that Gway has been in the basement over the last week. And when on the days when we had high participation, we had 20, 30, 40, 50. One day we had over 100 Ethereum. And I started looking at the gas from the day that that maximum payout took place. I think it's important for everybody to take into account that once that happened, two things took place. And Roz, please chime in and correct me because I'm an arborist. I'm not. A, I'm not a builder per se. But but on this, every day since then, the gas on Ethereum has gradually tapered off. And something else that I noticed is once I learned to look at the liquidity pool on Uniswap and watch how everybody was mining, there were a couple of things that were taking place when the system was healthy. Gas was up. The liquidity pool seemed to be very, very balanced out. And Roz, if you would give a give me a common person some background on why a balanced liquidity pool is very important to keep a project stable and not only stable but also attractive to outside people coming in. Well, it, it's exactly what I've uh, said uh, uh, a while ago. So, uh, people that that. Currently, in the in the crypto realm, people are looking for big gains. Uh, they jump from project to project. Uh, they want to put uh, dollars in and get more dollars out. Uh, and this is this is simple. Now, uh, price price is used as a marketing uh, tool in the in in the whole crypto area. So. While the prices go down, basically what happens is that people are getting frightened and they want to exit, even if they uh, if they uh, they will uh, have a loss on their. Uh, this is actually uh, normal in human behavior. Now, as uh, as I've said, uh, our community, the the OG community, we are all founders, so. We all need to protect the price because we know that uh, <coughs> others will get spooked out if the price is not uh, looking pretty. Now, with Q, Q is very... Uh, it, <laughs> it's uh, hard for me to say uh, because I, I will uh, sound subjective, but Q tokenomics are actually very, very uh, well thought. So 
if for example tomorrow we uh, use 100 ETH again to mint Q, <coughs> then the price will skyrocket. So we will see most probably uh, 10, 15 thousand dollars per Q. You know uh, why don't we do it? Because most of us are still scared and. Right now, I think that considering the, the low way is actually good to sit and wait and be patient because Q will only be minted out when people interact. You know, it's not you. You know that I all, are also uh, designed the uh, DXN and DXN was actually a time based uh, project where no matter the activity, a fixed amount of DXN would come out every day and it works just fine, you know. But here with Q, it's a bit more complex. So if people are not engaging, it's just like with Bitcoin, then uh, Q is not minted. So inflation is kept under under control. So, all right. So that, that's a great point. So like right now, if I, if let, let me, let me go to the Q site. So right now, Roz, if I go to uh, mineq.ai, which if you guys are following me, you see this posted all over my account all the time let me connect my wallet real quick let's talk about protocol fee Roz, is the is the protocol fee fixed is it the same all the time how does that work oh it's uh it's all in the light paper it's not uh, it's not complicated uh basically the protocol fee uh is calculated based on how many batches you want to batches is like power of mining so it goes uh, from 1 to 100. 100 it costs uh, 1 ETH approximately, and uh, 1 costs uh, uh, 0 point, 0 0.01 ETH. Now, on top of this, uh, there's a penalty that is applied for anyone that is late. So meaning that the first person that that will mint in a cycle has this, uh, this amount, uh, this cost, and the next one pays uh, one, no, 0.1 per percent more than the previous one. So this is why, for example, most of the people are rushing to mint as soon as possible in the uh, in the cycle. So th th and that's good. That's a very educational point that was asked a lot of times in Telegram. Like right now, it is. In my time, in my part of the world, it is 12, 13 p.m. And if I go to mineq.ai, I select add lunum. And if I do 100 batches, right now my estimated Q reward is 1.09. And the protocol fee is 1.07. Now, here's yes, one, one, one amendment. Uh, today I saw that uh, uh, AI Roby has uh, uh, the biggest rank. So... Be careful, everyone that that is uh, doing the mining part of the ecosystem. They should pay attention to the rank of the AI miner that uh, they choose because different ranks give you different uh, results. Highest rank gives you the most uh, Q. Yeah. So to add on to Raz's comment, if you did a hundred batches in AI Roby right now your estimated Q reward would be 1.64 Q and your protocol fee would be 1.0752. Um, the, the, the biggest question, Roz, is when this started, Q was the price of Ethereum or higher, but I always fall back to what you say is the price is your best marketing tool. As a community, Roz, like, there's been discussions on some days it's better to swap Ethereum for Q as opposed to mining. Here's my take on that. On those days, as we build this community into the future, if we understand liquidity and if we can balance out the Q to ETH ratio, that would then make it more attractive for people to come in. And would that also help out on our protocol fees as we uh, mine cycles in the future? Indeed, uh, this is not uh, this. Uh, this statement is not wrong at, uh, at all. But uh, I would uh, go a bit further and try to introduce the mindset of uh, of an investor. As remember that in uh, community-driven uh, uh, protocols, all 
the members, especially the, the early adopters, need to think like investors. So uh, right now, how, how do you, how can you actually have the ecosystem if you look from an investor perspective uh, or as a founder? So you either go and uh, market buy, if you market buy, let's say, five uh, ETH worth of Q, then most probably the price would uh, almost uh, double. Uh, there are other mechanics, uh, for example, mining Q. So if you, even if uh, it doesn't look from a mathematical perspective, a good way to invest right now, for example, to, to do a max batch on AI Roby, if 10 people would do that, then most probably the price would, would double and all of the uh, community members will get more fruits, if you want, uh, more rewards. And that would also uh, uh, help the ecosystem. And I, I just remember that uh, I read an article, I think uh, one week ago, about Bitcoin miners and how they choose to mine Bitcoin uh, like six, seven, eight months, even if they are still uh, not profitable with their means. Because at the end of the day, no one forces anyone to sell right after they mine it, you know? So Correct. there are so many different perspectives from uh, which you can look at the ecosystem. And basically the, the important thing is to for the uh, community members that are here for a long run, they need to start thinking as investors. And what would they do as founders to make the project be successful? Is it mining? Is it uh, market buying? Is it liquidity providing? At the end of the day, all of these uh, actions, everything that, that, uh, that, uh, that you can do and engage with the protocol can help even selling yes uh I, I think i think one of the the biggest educational pieces in this rise is the ethereum way it's like you, you put out some observations the other day th this this is uh the basic statement ethereum way is important when you mine because it determines the amount of ethereum fees you pay to start your miner, so consider the time of day, day of the week, when you decide to mine. As gas is higher, you will also mine more Q. So I think it's important for us as a community to recognize that on higher Ethereum, on higher Ethereum way days, that's when we can expect more participation. Now, I'll admit myself, on the days when participation is low, I go, ooh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hold off today because I don't want to get a low payout, but I do agree with your standpoint of if we are long term in this and we believe in this project, we should participate. Now, here's the other thing I'll add to that. And I agree with you when you say there's multiple strategies you can take with Q. Here's my opinion on it. Timing is key on your strategy. Over the last week, there were some people who exercised the strategy of I'm going to receive my Q, swap it for Ethereum and max 100 batches doing that. And then there's other people that say, I'm gonna take my own ETH and match a, and mint 100 cycles and do it for that. One comes from the outside, one uses the system's own liquidity to do it. What's your opinion on those two strategies? Well, both of them are correct. Like, like I said, uh, uh, participation is key here. And, uh, um, you know, at the end of the day, if we look at the, the ecosystem, we could identify three types of uh, uh, stakeholders or, or, or user categories. So we have the AI builders. No, uh, we, we forgot about them, but they are uh, very, very important because with, with, uh, without AI miners, we cannot mine Q. And now we have the uh, Q minters. So the ones that use the AI miner, choose a number of batches and mint uh, Q. Now, these are very important. Uh, this, is, this is one of the most important categories actually, because they are the ones that bring the Q to the market. And then we have the market. So those that actually trade or buy or stake or whatever. Uh, and if you look 
uh, at the Q ecosystem without this type of market, uh, Q uh, can be mistakenly uh, categorized or defined as a Ponzi or a zero sum game. But we need to understand that, especially the ones that are uh, Q minters, our Q minter responsibility is to bring Q to the market. So the ones that actually mint and uh, sell it right away, especially at these current prices, they, they actually get a loss. So they are, they are actually the most res uh, <laughs> responsible uh, users right now because they uh, unstake their queue. So basically, the staking position is lost. This means that the others get a better staking position and they bring the queue to the market. So they, they basically, they, they provide the liquidity by selling queue, you know. Now, would I uh, recommend this? Not really, but yeah, a few of them, if they do this, yeah, it's their choice and it's not bad. It's actually not bad for the entire ecosystem. Yeah, because like right now, my my own personal strategy is, is if I see cheap Q, I'm going to acquire it so I can move up that rank system that you designed to be higher in that 70% payout. That, to me, is, is just a, a no-brainer. I think as a community, if more of us join in talking about the tokenomics of this system, and how every strategy works if we build up, like you said, all the components, providing liquidity, uh, trading, selling, staking. If we participate in all of this collectively, and not only that, also remain optimistic, it's easy to become scared in crypto. But I'm going to tell you, I see the glass half full all the time. That's probably a good thing and a bad thing with me, and that's okay. But on this rise, I, I see what you've done. I see the system that you've created. And if any of you guys in this space have seen the payouts that this thing gave the first, uh, that it, what was it, like a six or seven day area rise where the payouts were just enormous? Wasn't it about six days? Yes, yes. But uh, one important uh, aspect of the, so uh, the payout is like a really, really cool mechanism to incentivize people to hold and to stake you know uh but it's just a feature so at the end of the day uh q, q is if you want and uh pardon if if uh i'm uh too daring to compare it with bitcoin but this is actually the truth so uh true believers need to actually mint q for q not for it it is a very good incentive to uh hold it now, one of the key lessons that in the next couple of months or, or in the next period, let's say, uh, that we need to teach our uh, community is to emphasize the importance of uh, crypto holders or Q holders acting as investors and protecting the crypto they choose to hold for. So uh, in this case, uh, Q. So we need to look very carefully at uh, the market stability and growth, the value uh, preservation, the market perce uh, perception and confidence. We need to have in mind a long-term vision. We need to give time to the community to innovate and we need to give time to the rest of the world to uh, know about Q and to get to real adoption. And yes, it is there as a real economic incentive to hold Q, you know? Oh, but absolutely. It's not the end goal. So the fact that, that we have this ETH uh, payout is very, very cool. But in my opinion, this should not be the, the end goal. Hey, that's, uh, that's great. And th what I get from that is the beauty of this is you can decide your own destiny in this. But also, you you say choose your path carefully, no matter what you choose. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So, rise, token factory. You don't have to reveal anything on this. What's it going to be? Tell us about it. I'm curious. I want to make a tree token. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I was thinking how how can we uh, further educate the community and 
let me make a, a, a short, short, short uh, disclaimer. Um, one second. So, looking at the current crypto world, I actually dislike the entire narrative, meaning the entire marketing is driven by greed and uh, it encourages crypto users to engage into speculative uh, pump and dump schemes. So we see all these uh, meme coins narratives. We see a lot of people chasing uh, inside information, trying to be the first ones in uh, traditional crypto so that they can catch the uh, pump and dump it uh, before before uh, <laughs> the, the price, price goes down. Now, while dollars are important, the goal of buying the low the lowest low and exiting the highest height is in my opinion uh, wrong now uh first principles of crypto stands to correct this behavior in my opinion and while it might sound merely like a marketing motto uh, i do believe that we can uh, make crypto great again now how can we educate how can we change this short time short-term mindset of uh, crypto users that are only looking to uh, enter low and exit quickly at the highest height well it's by actually uh, allowing them to create their own tokens in a very very simple manner so the goal uh, behind the token factory is that uh, we can all uh, become satoshi and how it will work it will be a simple website where you set up a couple of uh, um, numbers like uh, the total supply, um, the time frame of a cycle, uh, the buy and burn uh, percentage, etc., etc. And what you will get is a token that actually works exactly like you, meaning that, well, you start with zero supply and then uh, people go on the website and set up a, a miner and chooses the number of batches and the only difference uh, compared to Q is that whoever engages with your token they will need Q to uh, actually mint the, the new token and then anyone that actually creates a token like this will start learning about what liquidity providing uh, means what uh, marketing means etc etc now if we manage to get a large number of this type of tokens then i think that our community will flourish and we will grow exponentially because you will not talk about the founder of q but you will talk about founder founders of uh, first principle of uh, crypto tokens and one of the things that i would like to do for all this ecosystem is then to create a, a blockchain that will allow uh, all the holders of all this type of uh, first of principles crypto uh, tokens to 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 go into their own home you know uh, first principles of crypto blockchain and i think this type of narrative was never tried before uh was never done before so i really really think that uh this could heal the entire uh crypto crypto world that's amazing Roz. uh i look forward to covering that more on here and on uh on the crypto arborist youtube channel uh that's that's exciting to say the least um Roz, do you think we've covered everything today? Because uh, I think you've answered all the common questions. My listeners are on here, and uh, yeah, uh, that's <laughs> that's that's some good stuff, man. I, I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. If uh, there are any other questions in uh, in the chat, or if there's anyone that has any question, yeah, let's. Uh, let me let me check this chat on Let's here. See. I'm doing this on desktop. Let's see. Uh, no, I don't see that. I'll tell you what we can do. 
if we get questions in the comments, uh, and if you're okay with it, Roz, in a couple of weeks or something like that, we can do a follow-up space or live session on YouTube or something like that, because uh, YouTube needs a whole lot more acute protocol, and uh, we definitely need some Roz in that acute protocol uh, uh, material that's put out there. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, you heard it from the man himself, and... Uh, I'll be covering it more, and don't forget, we're having a Q protocol giveaway. Raj, you see that? No, no, no. I actually, uh, this is a surprise also for me. I, I know that uh, Crypto Audit, Audit King uh, had a giveaway. Uh, I actually, yep. I actually uh, bought a dip and uh, give some Q to Crypto Audit King to uh, just to let people know and you know uh once they 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 get their hands on q and i really i, I really think that they will enjoy it and uh yeah if uh, if if people uh make a step back and really think about economical ecosystems about the the current uh economical world uh, the current crypto world and then they really need they really get the grasp of of q we will be more than fine you know what what is what, one thing that uh, that i want to mention is that i am uh, sure that time works on our behalf and when i see uh, when i say our behalf is uh, everything that is uh, first principles of crypto related so it's just a matter of time and and you, you'll get a chuckle out of this. I finally figured out what that freaking buy and burn does. I asked a question about three or four times, and it's <laughs> it's kind of a common thing where it says, "Yeah, read the light paper." And I was like, "Yeah, I'm a tree guy. I'm not a uh, a code guy." So some of it's Hebrew to me, so or it doesn't make sense. But uh, but yeah, that uh, well, finally figured that out. So that's a pretty cool thing. Very important to understand the buy and burn uh, me uh, mechanics because, um, like I said uh, uh, at the beginning of the discussion, by minting uh, Q, basically you help also the price due to the fact that we have the buy and burn mechanism. So just think about the following fact. If uh, tomorrow we mint 100 Q, 20, uh, 25 ETH will go to buy and burn uh, mechanics. And that means that 25 ETH will be used to buy Q. And instead of going back into the staking pool, it will go to the uh, that address. Mm. So, so Raz, very, very important to have uh, the, <laughs> the buy and burn uh, mechanics. So, Raz, everybody that I've showed this to, when it shows estimated rewards in current cycle, and it shows current cycle amount, like right now it's low participation day because GUI is low. But right now it says current cycle amount, basically 3.25 Q. That's how much Q is being rewarded to the people who decided to mine today, correct? Yes. Okay. And then obviously current cycle amount of ETH, that's the total amount of ETH that's been collected for this cycle. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, Roz, always a pleasure, man. Uh, I'll check back with you in a couple of weeks, and I'm going to send you an inbox message after this space, okay? Thank you. All right, everybody take Have care. Don't forget day. to go to YouTube and subscribe and like the videos and follow me on X. Everybody, have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.